Welcome to Electron Line and the next era in the formation of the universe, part of the Big Bang, is what we call the Lepton Era. Remember that in the previous period we had what we call the Hadron Era where the large particles like neutron, neutrons and protons were being produced and when the annihilation, when protons and antiprotons and neutrons and antineutrons came together and annihilated each other, we had a slight leftover of the particles in, compared to the antiparticles and so the universe was now filled with the matter of these particles. But the smaller particles, leptons, such as electrons, they were still being produced at a furious rate because they're much smaller in mass, they require much lower temperature in order to be formed. Again, we need two particles, a particle and an antiparticle, like an electron and an antielectron. And to make one electron, it takes 511,000 electron volts. So again, using the same equation as before, uh, this is the energy of each particle. This comes from the constant from Wien's law. This is the conversion from joules to electron volts. Planck's constant and the speed of light. And we throw it into an equation. We can calculate the temperature required to make these particles. And the minimum temperature required to make a pair of electron, uh, anti-electron pair, you need at least 2.4 billion degrees in temperature. So the radiation that permeated the universe, which we now can see the leftover cosmic background radiation of, had to be at a temperature of at least 2.4 billion Kelvin. And sure enough, during the lepton era, which started uh, one second after the universe began to about three minutes after the universe began, so now we're talking about longer time periods, the temperature dropped from about 10 billion to about a billion. So this falls right within that range. And so we know that during that period, Furiously, the universe was creating leptons and anti-leptons, uh, positive and negative electrons, so to speak. They would be formed, they would annihilate, form and annihilate, and there would be so many more of these electrons and anti-electrons in the universe that matter-wise, there was way more mass due to these leptons than due to the baryons, the heavy particles, neutrons and protons. Of course, today that's not the case because a neutron and a proton has a mass of about 2,000 electrons, but back then there were billions of electrons for every one neutron and every one proton that their mass far exceeded the mass of the protons and neutrons. So we say that at that time, the leptons dominate the mass of the universe. May, way more leptons in mass than there would be neutrons and protons. But that went on for a small period of time, for about three minutes, until the temperature dropped below the critical temperature needed to make more. Again, they, they began all to annihilate each other, since the temperature had now dropped below the point where two particles could be, could be made from a single photon. The particle, the pair particle production stopped. They all annihilated each other, and again, according to theory, every particle should have annihilated every antiparticle, every lepton should have annihilated every antilepton, and should be none of them left. Of course, today we know that's not the case. There's lots of electrons in the universe, and again, for some reason, there was a small disparity between the, the particles and antiparticles, or leptons and antileptons, and so there was a small leftover, enough to fill the universe with the required electrons needed to make matter, to make atoms that have protons and nucleus and electrons in the orbits around it. Without that, matter wouldn't exist, and of course, we wouldn't exist either. So just like during the baryogenesis, for some reason, some, some, something that was thrown off, a slight amount more particles were created than antiparticles, which then were the leftover leptons in the universe that now make up the atoms in the universe. So now we had matter, we had protons, neutrons, we had electrons, the beginning of the matter that fills up the universe, and so now we'll figure out what happened next. And a very interesting thing hap happened next again, the result of which we now can observe, and then going back in time, you can see how the observ observations we're making today make a lot of sense as to our theory and how the universe started way back in the very beginning. So stay tuned if you're interested in the next phase of the universe.